Okay. I, I don't want to spend more than one day on this, though, so let's see if we can get through the ones we need to get through. Now, do we, do we want to look at this one? No. no. Does anybody want to see it? Because if anybody does, I'm going to go through it. Okay. Yeah, we want to see it. You want to see it? Okay, let's, uh, let's take a quick look at this then. So we're trying to find the limit of sine 6x over 9x as x approaches infinity. Okay, now here's all we have to know about this. As x approaches infinity, what's the bottom of the fraction doing? It's getting really big towards infinity. What's the top doing? Nothing special. It's just oscillating back and forth between negative 1 and 1. A sine function, if I graph a sine function, it just does this, right, forever. And so the y value that, the, the value of that function on the top is never very big or very small. And so what we end up with then, even though this isn't a constant on the top, the, the top is, is, is staying small, the bottom is getting huge, and so the overall behavior of the function then is right, is zero. As the bottom of a fraction explodes, the <coughs> fraction gets smaller. Okay? Okay, uh, yeah. Is it ever possible, like, so let's say you had sine on the bottom, sine 6x on the bottom, and 9x on the top, what would that be? Uh, that would be a problem because the bottom would go to the, the bottom would go to zero, right, right. at some points, and the, the function would have to be undefined there. Yeah, so you'd have a bunch of places where you'd have vertical asymptotes. Right, so it'd be, yeah, that's no good. It would be infinity then. Yeah, right, so you get, you get that'd be that'd be pretty weird. I mean, we could we'll look at some stuff like that at some point, but not at this very second. Okay, what about this? Find all points of inflection. Yeah, let's do it. Should we look at this? Okay. I hate you. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Not everything's about you, Caleb. Okay, find all points of inflection. All right, so this is this is uh, a, a what derivative issue if we're talking about points of inflection? Second derivative. Good. Points of inflection would only occur when what happens to the to the second derivative? The changes. Yeah, changes sign. Changes from positive to negative or vice versa. Meaning it's changing from concave up to concave down or vice versa, right? That's what a point of inflection is. So we need to find the second derivative. So if that's f of x, what is f prime of x? Well, how would I go about that? Take quotient rule, quotient rule. Okay, quotient rule. So I've got the bottom. Okay, bottom derivative of the top is 1, good, minus top times derivative of the bottom is 2x over the bottom square. Good. Okay, so then we can simplify that, and that's going to give us x squared minus 2x squared. Can we take out x squared plus 100 on the top and just 1 on the bottom? Oh, yeah. uh, we can't because I can't do that because this is not a factor of the top. It's not being multiplied. It's being added to this part. I can only factor. I can only cancel common factors. I can simplify the top though. I've got x squared plus 100 minus 2x squared. Well, isn't that just 100 minus x squared? Right. Right. Okay. I just I just combine terms. X squared minus two x squared is negative x squared plus a hundred. Oh, okay. Okay. Right? Yeah. So there's our first derivative. Now let's get the second derivative. Motion rule again, right? So we got the bottom times the derivative of the top. What's the derivative of the top? 
2x. Negative 2x, everybody see that? Minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. Now, what's the derivative of the bottom? Uh, that's, yeah. That's uh, no, hang on. I'm, but I get you the derivative of that. Right? I got that's what's going to be on the bottom of the whole thing. You're right. But we're doing bottom times derivative of the top minus top times derivative of the bottom. So what's the derivative of the bottom? Ah, oh, good. Good. Times 2x. Everybody see that? I've got to do uh, chain rule. I've got something squared, so the derivative of something squared is 2 times something to the 1 times the derivative of the something, so 2x. Yeah, so I get 2 times x squared plus 100 times 2x, right? Can you just distribute those? That would be the chain rule, Chad. No, I, I, I can't I can't distribute them because you mean distribute this? Yeah. No. No, I can't because I, I can't distribute a power over a sum. Is that what you're asking? No, he meant to get two. Yeah. Oh, I can. Sure. Yeah, I, I could. I could. But now the question is, do I want to? Or do you just want to factor it out? We'd rather just factor it out. Because there's no, what, why do unnecessary work? If we're just going to factor a bunch of stuff out, let's factor out what we can right away and then clean up the rest, right? So now look at the kinds of bases that we have here. We've got x squared plus 100s showing up, and I've got x's showing up, right? In fact, I could take out a 2x. In fact, I could take out a negative 2x if I wanted, right? So when I factor stuff out of this, let's pull out let's pull out the uh, the largest common power, meaning the smallest of the two, right, of the blue base, x squared plus 100. I can only take out an x squared plus 100 to the 1. That's all this one has to give, right? This guy only has one to give. This guy could give two, you know, two of those, but this one can't. So I've got wrong color. I keep a color straight. So I've got x squared plus 100. I could pull out a negative 2x, however. <coughs> and then what's left over if I do all that stuff? Well, it looks like I got rid of one of those powers. So I've got a, I've got a remaining x squared plus 100 from the first term. I completely took away. That guy, right? Mm -hmm. So that's it from the first term. Now, what about from the from the second term? I took away the minus, making that a plus, 2x, right? And I also took this guy away when I factored all that stuff out front, right? Okay, so I'm left with 2 times 100 minus x squared. So plus... plus 2 times 100 minus x squared, all divided by x squared plus 100 to the fourth, right? Okay, and it looks like I can do a little canceling there, right? I could cancel, the, now, now watch this, do you see that this is a factor? Yes. Because this is being multiplied by the rest of the stuff on this side. And I've got, this is a big, ugly factor that we'll be able to simplify. But we've got one, two, three factors being multiplied together on the top. <coughs> and the power of one factor on the bottom. Make sense? Yeah. So I can do this. Okay? Everybody see that? Yeah. Okay. So then I'm left with... left with negative 2x times, what do I get when I pull all this stuff together? I'm going to get x squared minus 2x squared is negative x squared on the top. And then 100 plus 200 is 300. 
Everybody agree that's what all that junk becomes if I just combine like terms? Okay, over. Okay, is that good? Okay, now let's, I'm going to pull back to the next page and then we'll just, we need this to find our inflection points, right? So we got the second derivative. So there's our, there's our second derivative. Now, if we want to find the critical numbers, we want to know, you know, where are the critical numbers? Well, the bottom is never zero, right? So we had no problems there. But where would be the zeros of the top? So f prime, so this equals zero at, or when, when either x equals zero, right? Or when x squared equals 300. <coughs> Everybody agree? And x squared equals 300 when x equals plus or minus the square root of 300? Yeah. So find the critical numbers, right. So we found the second derivative critical numbers. Now in our table, all we really have to do for our table, it doesn't have to be very big. We can just have, if we're looking for, for inflection points, and did they want the actual y values too? No, they didn't. <coughs> just, just the x values? Let's look and see. <laughs> okay, it wants the y values also. Okay. We're going to see here that we'll be able to skip that. We won't need them. Really? Yeah. So we don't we don't need the y prime row, do we? All we care about is the behavior of the second derivative. We got our three critical numbers. We've got one at zero, at negative the square root of 300, and at positive the square root of 300. Those were zeros of the second derivative. Now we just need to know <coughs> if those are places where the second derivative is changing signs. So what do we do? So you just point point. Yeah, we just check test, test points, right? So we'll pick points at maybe like negative 5, positive 5, and then how about if we did like 20? Sure. And negative 20. 20 squared is 400, so the square root of 300 has got to be less than 20, right? So if, if we check the sign of the second derivative at those places, uh, let's start with, well, I don't know, let's start with 5. If I put 5 in here, that's what it is in less than 5, okay? Right, we've got this factor, that's good. So 5 is going to make this negative, positive, positive, right? So overall sign? Negative. What about 20? 20 is going to give us negative, <coughs> negative, right? 300 minus 400, okay? Positive. Positive. Negative 5 is going to give us positive, positive, positive. Right? And negative 20 is going to be positive, negative, positive. So we end up with all three of those being inflection points. Right? So we get inflection points. There. So all of these values of x are, are, are values where we have inflection points. Now, if necessary, we could calculate the y values, but do we even need to? No. Look at our answers here. We can cancel a bunch of these, or just we can immediately get rid of That's no good, because it's only got two x values. That's no good. That's no good. So it's between these two, right? But it's got to be d. Right? It's got to be d, because look at the x values here. Negative 10, 0, and 10. Well, those weren't our x values. Negative 10 root 3, that's it, isn't it? That's square root of 300. What? Uh, because f only has two points. At least f3. At least f3. So that's our winner. Okay? 
Yeah. Everybody got it? I got it. Okay. Okay, use the, concave, use the concavity test to determine the intervals on which the graph of the function is concave up and concave down. So all this is, this is just the same problem we just did essentially, isn't it? We're just finding the signs of the second derivative. Yeah. This is a pretty easy second derivative to calculate though. D. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be D. Yeah, it is. The way we can see that, y prime is going to be x squared minus 4x minus 12, right? If I bring the 3 down, 3 over 3 is 1, right? So y double prime is just 2x minus 4, right? That equals 0 at x equals 2, right? And so if we made a little table, uh, 2 is going to be our critical number of the second derivative. Notice that's a y double prime. For values less than 2, like 0, we would get a negative second derivative. For values bigger than 2, like 10, we'd get a positive. And so then doesn't that just mean that it's going to be concave down on the interval up to 2 and concave up on the interval above 2, okay. right? Everybody see then that this has got to be our answer? Yes. Okay. Right? Use the second derivative test to find the local extrema. Oh, yeah. Yay or nay? Yay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yay? Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Nay. Yeah. Yeah. This. Yeah. this is a yay. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's f prime? <laughs> Negative 3x squared plus 12x, what's f double prime? Plus 12. Okay. So where are the zeros then? If we look at our second derivative, if I factor, or the first derivative, sorry, if I factor the first derivative, isn't that just equal to, I could pull out a negative 3x, leaving me with x minus 4. Right? So the zeros of the first derivative are where then? Where would the zeros of the first derivative be? Zero and four. Okay. So those are the critical numbers I want to test. Would it be negative three x times two x? No, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling out. I just factored this, right? If I, if I factor out a negative 3x, if I undistribute that. Oh, you factored that. I'll find factored the second derivative. Oh, no, no. I, I just factored this one. Right, okay. factored this one. So the, um, the, the first derivative critical numbers are 0 and 4, right? So if I make a table up here, it's going to be a little messy, but I'm just going to do it right on here. <coughs> Why did you find the second derivative? Because we're, we're using the second derivative test, it said. Using this, I mean, well, you wouldn't have to. You could do it. You're just trying to get the answer. Yeah. So you don't even have to. But it is. I would do it here. It's easy to do. Okay. In my table, I get critical numbers at zero and four of the first derivative. What's the sign of the second derivative there? Because that's the second derivative test. At x equals zero, the second derivative is positive or negative. Positive. I'm going to get 0 plus 12. So that's positive. So therefore, that is uh, a relative minimum, right? At x equals 4, I'm going to get negative. Whoops, negative. So that's. Why is it one to test the concavity if we don't need to? Well, you, you don't need to, but the alternative would be to the second derivative test. If you didn't calculate the second derivative, which is super easy to do, you'd have to calculate test points there, there, and there. 
and find the sign of the first derivative <coughs> on those test regions. That's more work. Right? It's easier just to go ahead and calculate the second derivative and find the sign of the second derivative at the first derivative critical numbers. That will tell you what's going on. Right? So it actually is a time saver. So you wouldn't have had to have done it, obviously. Yeah, you could do it any way you want to. Zero. So the solution, right, so how would you enter this then? The solution, they want to know what are the coordinates of the extrema. Okay, so we would have to input, yeah, it's going to be a little weird. You're going to have to go, you want ordered pairs separated by commas. So we, we'd have x equals zero. And if I put 0 into the original equation, I get negative 15, right? It wants the points. So 0, comma, negative 15, close that ordered pair, comma, another ordered pair, at 4, comma, if I put 4 in there, what am I getting? Sorry. Negative 64 <coughs> plus... 20, hold it. That's not right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 64 plus, two, so I'm going to get uh, 32 minus 50, so 17. Yep. And that, if I just evaluate the original function at 4, yeah. let's see. It. That, hopefully that's right. I can't tell, can I? What? If I hit submit, if I hit submit, what do I do if I hit next? What? Just hit, hit submit. Oh really? Just submit. I need help. Then I won't get to be able to go to the other problem. Yeah, you can. Just go back. Oh, serious? That just works? hit the review, and then you'll still see the same problem. It's not like you're. Won't, it's not like it's bad that you won't be able to be able to put them in. I, well, I won't be, but I can, can I put them in if I'm reviewing? No. no. Oh, I'll just I'll sleep. I know that's right. That's 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 you that's don't cool. know that though. It could that's be wrong. wrong. No, it's wrong. It's wrong. Just submit it. Submit it. It's right. So if you get into the peer pressure. Oh, no, no. Whoa. Oh, whoops. What about this one? Do we yeah, want to look at that one? Okay, so find the extreme values of f of x on that interval. All right, so we want to find the extreme values. We've got to find the critical numbers. Right? We're trying to find uh, <coughs> minima and maxima or end of right? I mean, they're going to be, we want to find the absolute minimum and absolute maximum is what they're asking for. Could be at a, at a critical number, could occur there, or it could occur at an endpoint. So we need to know where the critical numbers are and just compare the value of the function at the critical numbers to the value of the function at the endpoints, right? That's our strategy. So what's the derivative of negative 6 cosecant x? 6 cosecant tangent. Oops. Cosecant x. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it would be... It'd be uh, negative 6 times negative cosecant x uh, cotangent x. So the negatives cancel, right? And what I want to do here on this, though, well, you tell me. What do I do if I get an answer like that in terms of cosecants and cotangents? Yeah, I want to write it in terms of sines and cosines. Good. So this is going to look like 6 times cosecants 1 over sine, cotangents cosine over sine. So if I multiply straight across on the top, I'm just going to get 6 cosine x. On the bottom, I'm going to get a sine times a sine. So sine squared. Okay. Now, I just want to know the behavior. I want to know where are the critical numbers on this interval. right? On that interval, if I look at a unit circle, now wh where are we going there? From pi 6, that's right there up to 5, 6 pi is right there, right? Everybody agree? So that's the interval that we're going to check. Right? Uh, well, from 
pi 6 yeah, up to 5, 6 pi. Okay? So then we want to know now where is the numerator 0 or the denominator 0? Those would be the critical numbers. The denominator would be 0. Where is sine x equal to 0 on the unit circle? What points? Where's sine? Remember, sine is a vertical component, right? So where's the vertical component equal to 0? Yeah, there or there, right? At those points. Now, those are not on my interval. So on my interval, there are no critical numbers <coughs> caused by the denominator equaling 0. No place where the derivative is undefined on our interval. What about the numerator? Where is cosine x equal to 0? Uh, horizontal 0. So right there, right? So this equals 0 there. Okay, so I get... All I have to do then is I have to just compare the values of the function, the y values, at pi 6, pi halves, and 5, 6 pi, right? So if I made a little quick table, <laughs> so what are we going to get at pi 6? What's If I go back to the original function, the cosecant of pi 6, that's the reciprocal of... I, I, I hope I'm not bugging you guys. I'm talking kind of loud up here. Maybe I should keep it down. Okay. So at pi 6, what's the cosecant of pi 6? <coughs> That's just the reciprocal of sine. What's the sine of pi 6? What's the y, that y coordinate of that point right there? Uh, zero, one, two, zero. That, that's, that's the 30 degrees, right? That's the small angle. What's the y coordinate? Oh, it is. Come on now. What happened? One half. So the reciprocal would be would be two, right? Negative six times two is negative twelve. So there's one order. Okay. At five six pi, we're gonna get the same thing, aren't we? Because that's the same sine value, same y value, one half. So I'm also going to get negative twelve. What about at pi halves? At pi halves. What's the sine of pi halves? One. One, sure. Right. So the reciprocal of one is one. So there I'm just going to get negative six. So then we want to find the extreme values. Well, those are the extreme values. This is going to be the greatest value of the function, the maximum. The, the max is at, is is at pi halves and the value is negative six. The absolute minima are shared at both endpoints and they're negative <coughs> one. So how do we put that in? Let's see. We just put it in as negative six negative twelve. The absolute maximum has a value of negative six. Negative six, right. Negative negative six. Absolute minimum has a value of negative 12. Is that all they want us to do on that one? I don't know, because we can't submit it. If I hit next, I'm done. Okay. That one? No. Okay. We don't need it. Don't need it? No. Okay. We can come back if we need to. Uh, graph. Okay, end behavior. This one, I, I, I can see why people would have been a little confused by this. I, I, I can totally understand it. I understand it now. definitely going to be. The top and the bottom. Yeah, the leading term. It is. It is. There's not one with the graphs on the test, is there? Yeah, there's one like this. Really? You may not have gotten it, but you might next time. Yeah, I got it. If I have to take it again. True. You will. Okay, so if we look at the if we look at the ratio of the dominant terms of those two polynomials, it's just x to the fourth over x squared. So that's equal to 
what? What's x to the fourth over x squared? x squared. <coughs> so the end behavior is going to be the graph of x squared, which is that. Yep. Okay. Now, in the middle, it's going to do something vastly different from that, but the end behavior model is its going to look like, you know, way out there, it's going to look like a problem. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so we're just comparing the leading terms. Dominant terms. Use limits, limit rule to determine, okay, this is a quick one. Infinity. It's affinity. What yeah, there you go. Okay, now, now there's there's one place I can see where there's a potential pitfall on this, right? We got to get the sign correct. Is it positive or negative? Same rule as before. We're gonna we're gonna look at just the dominant terms. If I only look at the dominant terms, I'm taking the limit of two x cubed over seven x squared, right? Now, as x approaches, so we know it's gonna explode, right? We know it's going to explode. The bottom is going to be bigger than, going to grow faster than the, than the, excuse me, top grows faster than the bottom. So I know it's going to be infinity. But what flavor of infinity? If we look at the sign here of this first term, as x approaches positive infinity, isn't that going to be a large positive number on the top? Yeah. So the top is positive. The bottom is also positive. And so positive over positive is positive. Positive flavor. Okay. Does that make sense? Now, if, for example, that we've been approaching negative infinity, that would have changed. The top would have been negative and the bottom would have been positive, right? Mm -hmm. Because any number, a negative number cubed is negative, a negative number squared is positive. Flavor change. Right? Yeah. Everybody see that? Okay. All right. Making progress. We are. Okay. Ooh, this is, yeah, it's kind of a bad one. Should we look at this one? I think I got this one. I don't think I have this one. So we want to find all kinds of stuff. We want to find local extrema and the intervals on which it's increasing and decreasing, but no critical numbers. That's good. I mean, no, sorry, no uh, inflection points. So we don't have to take a second derivative here, and we won't want it because this is a quotient, right? Quotients just get worse with time as you, as you differentiate. So there's G. Let's calculate G prime. Okay, we got to do either quotient or product, don't we? Let's go. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this minus on the top just so we stick it in either the top or the bottom. And I'm gonna go ahead and use a quotient rule, just just because. What's the derivative of the top? Okay, and then we get minus top times the derivative of the bottom, which is all over the bottom square. Okay, we could factor out, it looks like, a negative 32 on the top, and that's about it. Right? So we get... What's the negative sign for the 32? Uh, because we had a negative sign out front, and I just grouped it on the top. Oh. No. Alternately, I could have just pulled the 32 out front and just left all that stuff out front, too, which is what, what we're doing right now anyway by factoring out a negative 32. So what's left then? I get x squared plus 16, and if I take out a negative 32, oops, let's leave that there. There's my negative 32, and I've got an x. So I've got a minus 2x squared. <coughs> right? Okay. Yep. All over x squared plus 16 squared. So I end up with negative 32 times 16 minus <coughs> x squared over x squared plus 16 squared. Okay, so there's, yeah. Where did you get the minus 2x squared on the numerator? 
Because two x is x. Uh, because if, when I take out, when I pull out that minus 32, I've got a negative x times 2x left over oh. on the top. When I, when I pull that negative 32 out front. Okay? So then if I want to find the critical numbers, the bottom is nowhere zero, right? Because x squared plus 16 is always positive value. Agree? Okay. Right? Top, I'm going to get where are my two zeros at the top going to be? Four and negative four. Good. It's going to be where 16 minus x squared is zero. So this whole thing equals zero at x squared equals 16, which is x equals plus or minus four. So those are my two critical numbers, right? So when we make our table then, when we make our table, let's go down, I guess. So negative 4 and 4 were zeros of the first derivative. We don't want to take a second derivative, so we're just going to use test points. Right? So we'll just use test points at what, 0, how about negative 10, positive 10? Right? So we're looking at the sign of the first derivative at those places. So here's our first derivative. What's the sign of the first derivative going to be at negative 10? You're going to get negative times negative. Right? 16 minus 100 is going to be negative over positive. So positive overall. Agreed? Yeah. How about at 0? You're going to get negative times positive over positive. So negative. And then at positive 10, negative times negative over positive is positive. Right? So. First of all, what kinds of extrema are those? What is this guy right here? At x equals negative 4, we have a what? Maximum. Maximum, going from increasing function, slope is yeah. positive, to decreasing through a horizontal tangent. Right? Over here, I'm going from decreasing to increasing through a horizontal tangent. Right? And then if I want to know the intervals where the function is increasing, I know that f of x is increasing on when? How would I say that? OK, so on that interval, good. Did you need the bracket? Right. Did, did you need the bracket? Are you supposed to put I don't the test. Can we submit this bracket. one? Okay, we'll, we'll, yeah, sure. we'll put this one in. So it's going to be that way, and then we're going to have 4 to infinity. And then it's decreasing just between the two, right? Between negative 4 and 4. Okay, so let's go put this in and see what it looks like. So the local minima are negative. Uh, like an ordered pair. Can so we just put the increasing to see if the brackets. sure sure. Would everybody agree that the minima are going to be at the minima four. was at was at four right? So it'd be four and whatever that number is. Okay, four and then if I put four in, I'm going to get one twenty eight over thirty two. So it's four, isn't it? So it's at four four. Negative four. No no no. Positive four positive four right? Was the minimum at negative? I already lost track. Minimum was at positive four, right? <laughs> right. So 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 then I'm I'm inputting, right? So I'm putting in here then I'm putting the order pair. X equals four, Y equals four. Oh, it's but I see you say yeah. it's minus. Okay. I got Thank you. you. Minus. I have no idea where. That's then. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. So there. So that one's good. Local maxima are at, so that's going to be at negative 4, positive 4, right? Okay, so x was at, remember we had negative 4 was our x value. If I plug negative 4 in up there, I'm going to get a y value of positive 4. Okay, and then increasing on. Yeah, here's the part we got we got to see. Oh, I just can't do that. Okay, so it's going to be. 
use a comma to separate answers as needed. So we want to put this in like this then. It wants us to go negative infinity, comma, negative four, bracket, and then comma, right? We're, it you wants us to bracket. separate you answers with a comma. You didn't bracket. put a bracket, you put a parenthesis. Oh, but I don't want a bracket. Uh, because it, it, that's wrong. It, did it really say that? The practice test well, show did say that. Do it. Okay, no, it's, it, it's, that, that would be, I'd be wrong. Because it's not including that point. I want to make, real quick, you guys understand here that, that it's increasing up to negative four, but at negative four, it's neither increasing nor decreasing. It's a horizontal tangent. So it should be the values less than negative four or the values greater than positive four. Okay, so we'll, we'll check to make sure that, that they've got this. I remember is the practice exam for me it had the brackets and then the test it had it had a red highlight like it does right there like it wasn't finished when I put the brackets in. So I'm assuming that the test had it. Yeah, that's good. That, that's how it should be, right? Yeah. When you say bracket, you didn't mean like square bracket, right? Yeah. Oh, you don't want that. Well, I know. I'm just saying okay. that my practice test did that. Just, just hit submit. Just hit submit. Is there another one? And we just we just want to see the brackets, though. It's yes. So the other one would have just been between would have been between negative yes. and positive. Yes. Yes. Okay. So this one was this one was right. Well, because we did everything except I want to just check it just because we didn't do the last part. No, I won't. No way. Uh, see? Uh, uh, why did it put brackets in? Exactly. Mm. Oh, that's wrong. Thank you. That's not my question, by the way. That's their okay, Yeah, sure. That really is. That's the book. Okay, I'll go back and grade those, but does everybody understand that that is... I'm, I'm, Dead certain that is absolutely wrong. Oh, I understand. You wouldn't wrong, include those points. But that's what I was worried about. Yeah. I didn't no, I'll go back and regrade those. I think the test has it right though, because when I put it in with the bracket, like it does in the practice test, it was highlighted in red, like it does when it before it's finished, which makes me think that it definitely doesn't want it in the bracket. So if you, maybe you made the test. Did you make the test question? Or did you just uh, maybe, you maybe I made the test question because this is the, the, the this is the one out of the book. Are you sure. It's not, it's not. It's so frustrating. Yeah. After school today, I have to and finish one more question on the test. I, you know what? I would any other day I would, but today I've got to go. I have to leave right after school. I got a sick kid. And I got to go. <coughs> yeah. So I, I, I would. Okay. Can we, can we do it Monday? Well, I won't be here all next week. Oh, okay. Here. Okay. What, what do you got? What do you have next period? Um, government. Can you swing down to three thirty-two next period? Is there any chance or is that yeah, not? We're not doing anything. We're just looking at the chapter. Hi, Kevin. Four days. So I'll give you the notes. Yeah. Link, can you just write me a note? Yeah. yeah. I'll yeah. give you the notes. Yeah. Yeah. Just do that. Yeah. No. Okay. Sorry? Yes. Can you write me a note? Right. Kevin, you're really Yeah, I can. Sorry. Didn't already write you one? Yeah. You're very small. Yeah. Yeah. This one's just right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you bet. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. When do you need it? Uh, not for a couple of weeks, probably. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, do I, am I supposed to bring you the envelope or do you have it? Uh, so my mom was like, just tell him we'll bring the envelope on Monday. Uh, oh, uh, well, it may, maybe there's a form I have to fill out or something. I'm going to go to the yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I think just a letter of recommendation. And then it's all it is? Yeah. Well, that, if you just tell me the address, then I don't even need an envelope. I can okay. just put it on ours. That's okay. fine. Yeah, just just oh, get me where it's going back. and all that stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Are we going to love you? Yes. Uh, 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 3.32. Oh, go. Yeah, go. I mean, we're just we're just working on well. I'm test. I have I have the no, I have the graphing to do. That's it. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, go. If you're you're probably getting this stuff. There's a ton of stuff going around. Right now. Do you want me yeah. to meet you there? Three thirty-two. Yeah. Yeah. Just go over there. Why don't you go over there right now? I'll give you the keys. Blake, we got a three thirty-two. Yeah. You're gonna be in there with us. Yeah, I'm gonna be in there with you. I'm just gonna shut everything down. I'll be right over. Back there you are. You betcha. Yes, we're going there. <laughs> this one? Uh, all right. Okay, Phil, it's 3.32.